And I'm also going to check this box that says um, public URLs because I want this to be able to be seen by other students and by obviously by me. Um, so I'm going to hit save when that's done. And now I have my um, timeline here. Uh, so in the middle, this is just a little help window. I can close that. Um, but here I can see on the bottom right here is exactly what date I'm lined up to. You can see the timeline itself spans out along the bottom and the title right here is on the bottom. Um, in the top right we have our zoom functions, so zooming in and zooming out, plus and minus, and shifting right and left. And these will work when we have events and we want to go from event to event. Um, on the top left here you'll notice it gives you the new event part. It also gives you filters, um, which we'll talk about at a later time as well, um, specifically with tags, because this will be a cool way for you to use tags to see what events are connected. Um, and then you can also do preview mode, so it'll be um, pretty much exactly the way that I'll be able to see it when I look at it or if another teammate looks at it. So to get started, I can actually just double click anywhere I want to add an event, um, or I can go up to new event and add an event there. For the sake of this um, demonstration, I'm going to go back to my three events that I had created from last map. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add one of these. So I'm going to start with the bombing at um, Hiroshima. So this was August 6, 1945. So to add this event, I can just double click wherever I want. And it opens up with this screen. And this is a screen that will give you every time they have a new event. Um, for the sake of this one, obviously I want to think of what the title is, and we want to keep our titles pretty limited so that they don't take up too much space physically on the timeline. So I'm going to put Hiroshima. I'm not going to put the bombing of, I'm not going to add anything else, but I'm just going to put that. The second thing i got to think about is what my icon is going to be. And for this project, for our icons, we need to choose them based on what types of events were t are taking place. So all the same types of events should have the same t um, icons just as you did with your icons for the map of the various locations for the internment camps. If you click on this icon button, let me just do that again, if you click on the icon button, you'll be given all these different shapes or symbols that you can choose from. Um, there's lots of good options here. You can choose whatever you'd like to. Um, in terms of for this, I want to keep it consistent. I want to have something I can come back to. So in terms of bombings, um, the fire emblem seems to sort of indicate a bombing. Also the skull, but that seems a little bit... Um, just a little bit too much. I don't think I need to do that. So I'm going to click the fire one and then I can say choose. So I know it's going to have that icon. Then I need to choose the date. So I, I'm going to go back to my list just to make sure I double check it. And I said it was August 6th, 1945. So clicking on the date, I can, I can enter in the date or I can just click the calendar button. You said it was 1945. I'm going to click August and click the 6th. Just double checking that. August 6, 1945. Yep. Okay. Got my date. I'm going to press OK. Time, I'm not too worried about. Um, this button span will allow me to add if I had uh, an event that actually went for a long time. So if, for example, I wanted to put the expanse of the entire Second World War, I could say that it started on a date and that it ended on another date. In this case, the bombing of Hiroshima was just one specific time. So I just want it to be one event. I'm not going to add that extra stuff. Below that, the date display will allow me to say how much do I want to show my audience. So you can show, and the example will show you how much you'd be showing, but the day, the year, the month, and even all the way down to the hour. Now, I don't think I need it down to the hour because I'm not paying attention to the time, but I do think I need it down to the day because it's a very specific day. So instead of making it just a year or the year and the month, I'm going to have it be the year, month, and day. Um, and in terms of importance, this is where we get to choose, and this is going to be something you're going to have to really be thinking critically about. Comparatively to all the other events on my timeline, how important is this event? And you can either, and this is on a scale from 0 to 100, you can either enter in a number or you can choose to drag the scale. Um, and this is going to be something you're going to have to consider, but also something you can come back to. So if you decide, you know what, this event isn't as important as another one, or maybe I want to change it, I can come back and change it. I think this is a pretty significant event in the in our history of, uh, of World War II, obviously, and with a novel. So I'm going to put it in maybe just about 70. Um, and on the last part of the bottom is which timeline I'm going to put this in. And in this case, you only have one option. You have the hotel in the corner. For me, I also have the sample. I'm just going to focus on hotel in the corner. So I'm going to select that one and click out.
Now, before I save this, I need to add my description. This is just like what we did before. And the beauty of this, again, is that I can go back to my, my list of events. I can copy. And then I can paste in my description. I've got my description. Great. Now, let's say I want to add an image. Right here, I can go ahead and add an image. One thing we haven't talked a lot about that I'm going to show you right now is how to find an image that will work to show up on the screen. Here's the way we're going to do this. I'm going to open up a new tab, and I'm going to type in a search um, in the Google search and go to Google Images. Now I'm going to do two things here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm getting images that are free to share. That means that they're actually being allowed to share with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the big wheel over here and go to Advanced Search. You'll see my search words are already in here. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, the last one, Usage Rights, I'm going to click that and choose Free to Use or Share. And that means that this is an image that somebody has, else has put on that, a lot, that they say, you know what, you can use it if you want to for whatever reason you want to. So that allows me to know that I'm actually using an image that's um, not plagiarizing, that's not copyrighted, um, that I can actually feel free using based on the person that put it in. So advanced search, I'm going to come up with these images. So I, I think having an image of probably the bomb, the... the um, excuse me, the mushroom cloud would probably be really effective for this because that was a um, really iconic image with the bombing. So I'm going to click on this one. I know again that it's safe to use, that it's free to use, so I can use this. Now instead of actually just copying right here, dragging this onto my hard drive, anything like that, I need to click on the view image button. This is really critical. The view image button will take me to a page that ends with the letters .jpg. That's really key. That means that this image is going to show up on the timeline. So I have the picture. It's a .jpg. I'm going to copy this URL. And I'm going to go back to my time glider and I'm going to plug this in right here. So that way it's going to be able to show up just like that. And notice I clicked the uh, reset button so it can show me what it's going to look like. Okay. So I've got my image. If I click the next tab up here, I actually get some options in terms of adding a link in case I wanted to add a link to more information about the bombing, or if I want to add audio or video. In this case, there's, there's three options here, and you can see what they have for audio and video. They have YouTube, they have Vimeo, and they have SoundCloud. Uh, and they're very specific about what you need to take from those websites to include it in here, so it's in the timeline. It's very straightforward to do. So if we go to YouTube right now, and I'm just going to choose a random video to post on the timeline. So I'm going to go to YouTube, do my search, hmm, history gems, this has 2 million views, this seems like it's probably going to be a pretty good video. So here's my video, I'm going to pause it right here. Um, to be able to figure out how to embed this in my actual time glider, instead of clicking on the URL up top, I actually want to go to the share button on the bottom here. Okay, so this is on every YouTube video. If I click share, it's going to have a couple options. First thing I notice, I've got all these random um, social media places that I could share with. I'm not interested in that. But I do have this shortened URL. This URL is a great thing to use. You also notice that it has the start at number. So if I decided I wanted to start this video four minutes in, I could say start this at four minutes and it would clip it for me. Okay. So notice it changed to the, to the ending T equals 4M because it changed it to start just at 4 minutes. If I don't want to do that, I can just take that off the end. Okay. Um, the other thing I might have to do, so first, first of all, I can, I can take this clip and let's say I want to just start it from the beginning. So I'm going to take this YouTube part, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go back to my time glider. If I paste this in here, it should work fine. Okay. Um, and it's asking me right now, we found an image associated with this video. Use it as an event image, and I'm okay with that. If it uses an image from the video itself, that's fine. Um, it can be one of the images from the event. If I don't want that, I can hit cancel. The other thing I might have to do if I use Vimeo or if I use SoundCloud is to use what they call an iframe. You don't need to know what an iframe is. What you do need to know is that this is how you find it. Under the share, you need to look for the word embed. And you'll notice you get this weird kind of text. This is what we call HTML, how they make websites. And it starts with iframe. 
this is the same thing you'll see on Vimeo, same thing on SoundCloud. If I copied and pasted this, it would also work to put the video embedded into my timeline. So I have those two options for YouTube. So I've already got my link in from YouTube though, so I should be all set. So I'm gonna click over to the last part, which is tags. And this is the part that uh, Ms. Altabella and I are very excited about using with you guys. You've, you've started to use them with some of your um, some of your work in class, and this is gonna be a big push for us moving forward. Um, tags are gonna be really important because they're gonna allow us to see the connection between events over time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use tags to label what our event has to do with and why it's important. So for the bombing of Hiroshima, there's a couple different tags that come to mind. The first thing I'm thinking about is who. Okay, I know this involves the United States, and once I tip, type that in, I can hit the return button, and it will show up as a tag. See the tag right there? I know it also involves Japan. So I've got the who. What about the what? I know it was a bombing. Hmm, I also know it was nuclear war. And notice that each time I get to the end of it, I'm going to hit return, and it will end up as a tag. Okay, now I have four. We're required to have three for each event, but I have four here. I could add a lot more to this that could continue to add it that would make this even better and even easier to search and make connections to in the future. Um, in this case, I'm going to pause right here. One thing that will also happen is as I add these, these will be added to my tags panel. And this tags panel where I'm showing you with my cursor will actually show me other tags that I've used before. So that when I add another event, these tags will show up again and I can just click them to add them automatically. It's a really easy way to do it and will allow you to see, oh, I use this tag for another event just like it. Good, I'm going to use that tag again and click it. So it's going to be a great way to do that. So I've got my tags, got my links, my image, my description, everything's all set. So now I can just hit the save button. And once this saves, you'll notice a couple of things. First of all, you see that I have the event right here. And when I scroll over it, it shows me the date. The second thing is that you'll notice there's a line and above that line is the image. This image line, this is the lane and it shows you right here. Is it explaining for you in the front, the image lane. And so this I can change how big or small it is, but it will be the place where all the images show up above their respective events. It makes it easier to search for these things. So again, I've got my image, I've got my event. If I wanna change this event, I can click on it and it will simply come up with this screen. If I wanna delete it, there's a delete button. If I'm fine with it, just close out of it, it's fine. Uh, and again, with the zoom, if I zoom out, you notice the years on the bottom changing. If I zoom in, I get even more specific and I can see my event. And if I shift left and right, that'll take me to the next ones, but to my next events. Um, now I'm ready for another event. I can go right to new events and I can search there. Um, I also want you to notice with filters, this is where we'll be able to look and see based on tags, what comes up. And this is something we'll get into later. It looks like that's for the titles part at least, but we don't have to worry about that now. But that's a way that we're going to be able to search for tags specifically. So um, if you have any questions, find me on Edmodo. Um, otherwise, good luck. Add all your events and don't forget about your tags. Thanks, guys.